Hi everybody, Jason here, and thanks for tuning in to Driver's Paddock. Today we're at Amtec Auto, and we're taking a look at their G87 M2. It has a few carbon fiber bits on it and a downpipe and a tune, but today it's getting three-way adjustable nitron coilovers. And if you know anything about my personal garage, you'll know that I have an F87 M2 composition with the same coilovers. So I'm really excited to see how the car performs. It's also getting endless mono six front calipers. I'm excited to see how those compare against my AP Racing uh, brakes. So follow along, let's take a look at this build. We have the exhaust off now and uh, the guys are trying to figure out uh, how to best tackle this but you can see just in the frame there some parts so let's go over and take a look to our right we have this beautiful rs7 but what we're really here for take a look at all these parts that are about to go on this g87 so we have the again the nitron three-way adjustable coilovers we have the mad trace uh, brake cooling system we have the uh, rear toe arm uh, caster arms and uh over here, absolutely beautiful, is the uh, Endless Mono 6 uh, front brake system. So there are the calipers there. Really, really, really nice. I'm excited to see how these perform compared to my AP Racing brakes. But just look at the finish on these rotors. Really stunning. If there's one thing that I feel like every G87 or F87 needs to install is a uh, skid plate. Uh, so it's an aluminum skid plate, but if you look directly between the grates you'll see that there is a cooler right there so everybody if you're if you're going on track if you're not even if you even if you don't track I feel like that's a, a good piece to have hey guys Jason here finally we made it to Toronto Motorsports Park it's minus three degrees right now it's freezing but let's use this little two lap timer let's figure out what this thing can do to my right another M4 G82 looks absolutely amazing hopefully we'll get some shots of that car as well but we have one goal let's see how fast we can go in this two track minded first g87 experience Let's warm it up, see what it can do. Typical BMW fashion.
should not be there. He should not be there. Well, he's taking photos of you. Huh? He's taking photos of you. Holy shit, this thing is so fast. Hey guys, that was not my best driving, but in my first three laps, we did a 115.8. This thing is absolutely crazy. So what we're doing now is we are gonna jack up the car. We're going to uh, set up the dampers. Um, I have the same damper uh, set up on my F87 M2 competition. The thing is the car is squatting down like crazy, such that whenever I get on power, uh, it's unloading the front. It's unloading the front tire. So I'm getting a lot of uh, mid-corner understeer. I can manage the front end uh, on the brakes uh, as I enter. I do want a little bit more rebound damping uh, in the front so that I can shift the weight to the front tires and keep it on there for longer. And then I want the rear to squat less uh, when I'm on power. So I'm gonna play with the front rebound. I'm gonna increase uh, front rebound damping and then uh, increase uh, rear compression damping. And hopefully I get my result. Uh, thing is, the car is not putting the power down. Um, I have to be really, really patient with uh, my throttle. As you can see through the GoPro footage, my, my first corner, turn one, I was completely sideways. But uh, you do have to be quick with your hands uh, when it does break loose. Maybe that's because of the, the tune, I'm not sure, but the chassis can de definitely handle more. So uh, let's change the damping a little bit. Let's play around with tire pressures a little bit, and then we'll see what I can do at the end of the day. 115.88. And uh, the reason why that's not a 14, more and more excuses, is there was a photographer at the runoff of turn two. So I really backed it down um, there. Just, I don't want to hit anybody, right? So worst case scenario. So uh, let's go back out and see what we can do. Let's see what this car can do.
gotta get some temperature in the tires. It's minus two degree weather. I just did a 114.73 in two laps. So I pulled off. Uh, the only reason I pulled off is because I know exactly what the car needs. I know uh, what damping changes need to be made. I'm gonna do a 13 today. These tires are on their last leg. Uh, they're garbage after this track day probably. But uh, three laps in the car, 115. Damper changes. I got the tire pressures up to 40. Uh, now we just set the tire pressures. bit of a off-track excursion there um, I would say that's a pretty good save uh, just a little bit off uh, saved it it was good uh, the optimal is now a low low 14 so 114 one I think I can get it we'll, we'll see what happens but um one second here speaking of off-track excursions today so that was on track excursion that was on track excursion. Yeah, it's just extra part of the track excursion. uh-huh uh -huh. like in your podcast you talk a lot about uh the that most corner. feared corner right i know but this i actually feel like i didn't think we were going to touch the wall because the car was already mostly straight okay and it's got a wide body kit too right so okay. like if it didn't have the wide body i think i probably would have been okay okay all right but it wasn't scary because the car, like again the car wasn't excessively rotating it was under rotating but I, I thought it was going to be straightened out. Uh -huh, so, uh -huh. you know, we just scrape, just sandpaper the wall a little yeah. bit. A little, bit of, little bit of sandpaper. But uh, sandpaper. we'll uh, we'll squeeze that footage in there <laughs> if it's there. Oh, I, this I, guy's GoPro, GoPro was, was on time lapse. Time so lapse. Uh, it would have been so but we have a smarty cam. We have it. a smarty cam. It would be so much better to have it from the first person perspective, too. Even if you have the smarty cam. But yeah. I'll settle for the smarty cam. Yeah, yeah. Praying to God we have the smarty yeah. cam footage. Cue smarty cam footage. Yeah. Before I give my final thoughts on the G87, I just want to say thank you to Team MTech for letting me uh, come out and test their car. They have always looked after my personal BMW F87 M2C uh, for all its track needs. They looked after my BRZ, 
uh, when the engine blown and they're just an amazing tuning shop for BMWs, Porsche, Audi and more. So if you're in the GTA, check them out. Thanks so much to OCD Detail, OCD Detail 6 uh, for always keeping the cars clean as well. Thank you so much and uh, stay tuned for my thoughts on the G87 versus F87. Pushing too hard, I don't want to crash. There's so much more time on the table. I can't be uh, unhappy about that in a minus two degree weather. That's it for me, that's it for me. I'm done, I'm done. I'm not getting any faster. The risk is increasing. There's no point to push that hard. I will try again in warm weather. Well, as you guys can see, I'm starting to overdrive the car a little bit and the rear tires are, are, are they're just completely done. Um, they're two season old. Uh, they brought them out just for me to test the car and set it up. And um, wow, it is a monster. It is so, so, so fast. F87 guys, we're, we're in a bit of trouble here. And a uh, million dollar question, everyone was asking me, how does it compare to your F87 M2C? My car has the same suspension, has upgraded brakes like this one. Um, how does it compare? And so I'm going to sound crazy, but this G87, it is definitely new gen BMW. It does not feel like um, the F87 or BMWs of the past. It feels more like a mid-engine Cayman. And uh, let me let me explain myself. And so. The way that this car yaws is not like the F87 or even the E92. And you'll see people on TikTok or, or on YouTube drift through BMWs. You know, all you'd have to do is pitch it in, give it a boatload of throttle. And, and the, the way that the rear end excites and kicks out is very, very different than the G87. The G87, the way that it yaws is not super abrupt. Um, you see from my videos that obviously I'm correcting for a lot of oversteer, but that's because the tires are not putting down the power. And also... Um, the tires are really, really cold and it's also minus two here. And so when the tire, when there is some temp in the tires on my hot laps, the way the car yaws is very slow, like a mid-engine car, like a Cayman. It'll yaw and then up to a certain point, it'll just kind of push you out of the corner. Like, I don't know if that's clever differential tuning by BMW, um, but, but it's very different than the F87s and the E92s. And the front end of this G87 is so sorted out. It has way more front end bite than the cars of past. BMWs, you know, they're kind of known to understeer on the way in, oversteer on the way out. Not this car. The chassis is way better. It's way more balanced. Um, you do feel the weight mid corner though. If you give me a bucket seat and you give me um, you give me a harness, and I can left foot brake and I can control the pitch of the car just a little bit better. I, I would have done a 13 today. I would have done a 13 in the first, I don't know. But uh, when the temperatures warm back up and uh, the car's developed a little bit more, it's getting a uh, pole position with Caros, it's getting a cage, it's getting some aero. Uh, and then of course, further further uh, driver mod, myself getting faster, getting better, doing data analysis, working hard, putting time in the sim. Uh, I think it can do a 112. And uh, that's with new tires, optimal conditions. And on slicks, I wouldn't be surprised if this car can do a 110. So thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for coming along uh, for this uh, G87 experience, you can call it. But like, comment, subscribe. You're going to see more of this car on my channel. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See you guys. So you'll see a lot of these guys behind me on my channel if you follow along. And it's all about building community, right? And this guy right here, the best track marshal ever. This is Thank Chris. He's a really, really fast driver, fellow time attacker, and uh, amazing marshal. Always keeps us safe, so I'm always thankful to have him here. He's absolutely amazing.
Dragos Gabe. What's up? Sh yo, I'm trying to get um, like more viewership with ladies. Can you show your biceps? I know it's a little cold. <laughs> if you don't mind, like just Wait, you, just you like gotta, what if you don't mind showing the biceps. Oh, no, I'm trying to get like more viewership. Like very next episode, right I'll show some feet. You know, I feel very put on the spot. It's minus two right now. It is Let's see the bicep. Just like show the silhouette of the bicep. You know, double. Give me a front double bicep, and my my subscribers. Yes, I'm gonna go through the roof. Thank you, thank you. You got Leo here. This guy knows everything about the TT. Extremely knowledgeable guy. Super fast driver as well. And then get in there. These guys are all my teammates for this uh, next Lucky Dog season, right? Got two track minded, Sean Ma, front wheel drive super specialist, super car control master. You guys got to tune into the two track minded uh, podcast where Sean will be on, and uh, of course talking to uh, to Jay. So thanks for tuning in today, guys, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.